people coming into this area and firing shots. This moving around and talking to the communities is trying to arrest the aftermath of what has happened. There has been a looting here, there has been a serious clash of the community. They raised a question of a 15-year-old that died here. Those are the things that might take long to heal. So we are saying let's create the healing period for communities to come together. As you see here, uh, there are basically three kinds of communities. That would be Indian community, colored community from Effingham and around here. And here, the place is called Sikau Lake, uh, where we are dealing with the matters of racism that has been raised. But also the issue of criminality, since there are people that have stolen and looted things. So the, the, the question is, is there any positive outcomes on this? We believe that if we don't do anything, there won't be a time where the communities can get, go back to normality. We are trying to facilitate normality, but also to cut off any kind of pain, any kind of animosity going forward. Well, Police Minister Betty Kwele says criminality and not racism is the immediate challenge in Phoenix, north of Durban. He has announced that an interim committee will be set up with community leaders from Phoenix, Bombay and Zwelicha. There have been concerns over the racial tensions in the area due to the ongoing unrest. Now, let's discuss this further. We're joined by a Zoom by Dr. Tandolwe to Namahwai, senior political lecturer at Northwest University and political analyst. Dr. Namahwai, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Perhaps before we talk about what's happening in Phoenix and those challenges, I mean, there have been recent developments. Just today we've heard of three alleged instigators of the violent unrest that we've seen over the past week being arrested. And we're told that they're not part of the 12 that police initially thought they were part of. We've also seen this violence, you know, um, taking the lives of over 200 people and scores being left you know, without jobs, their livelihoods just taken. Talk to me uh, about just some of the latest developments, um, you know, in your view, in terms of what we're seeing uh, outplaying now in, in front of us in South Africa. Um, thank you very much, um, and good afternoon to the viewers at home. I think what we see, what we saw in the past week, what is called as a, a, a looting week, um, um, it's a combination of many things that, that, that have happened in this particular week. For example, you have mentioned the issue of the arrest of, of instigators. I think what the government is trying to do now is trying to, 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 to clean up so that the message gets loud and clear to those who are actually perpetrating um, um, this, uh, that this is this is unconstitutional and this is against what we stand for as a constitutional democracy. That's number one. And of course, um, there are issues of, of criminality as we have seen in some areas and, and the issues of, of, of ethnic tensions, racism, particularly in Durban, because you, see, you might have seen the tension between the Indian and the, and the Black African um, um, communities. But in Jobek and 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 uh, I think we, we need to distinguish between what is happening in Gauteng and what is happening in, in, in Devon. I'll tell you why. What we saw in, in Gauteng in the past week or so were the pure, issue, were the pure issues of, of, of inequality and employment, which were worsened. I've already said in my previous, previous interviews that they were worsened by, by, by COVID-19 lockdowns. As you have said, that people have lost jobs. And, and the unemployment rate is, is actually increasing. So in, in, in health and particularly, so those are issues of inequality, um, um, uh, poverty, hunger, and so on and so forth. And, and of course, the issues of, of um, criminality which are attached to that. But in, in, in case that and it's quite a different scenario because you have seen in the past two days or so that there were tension between the, the, the Indian and the Black African um, um, and people, why is that? In case that, and the majority of the people who are who, are, who own businesses, or one would say who are industrialists, are mainly your Indians. Why your your your, your people who are working for those for those companies or firms are mainly your black people. So for a very long time, this racial this redress in terms of who gets what and when 
has been not been fully addressed by the post-1994 uh, government because the issue in the post-1994 was a redress between blacks and whites, which is a skin color, um, ignoring the issues of, of ethnicity and tribalism. Now, these issues are starting to boil up and we might see more tensions coming out of this um, um, ethnic tensions or tribal tensions. And the, the, this, this was paid, this paid away by the incarceration of former president um, uh, um, Jacob Zuma, which were ethnic elements and tribal elements. And this is not new, as I have said earlier on, that if you recall in 2007, in the run up to the Polo Kwana uh, conference, you might have seen that most people who were supporting Jacob Zuma were Zulu speaking. So they were supporting their own and they're protecting their own uh, uh, Zulu boy, quote unquote. And you, you might have seen that there were t shirts who were banned with the face of the then former president, Tabombeki. Um, and, and utterances like will kill for Zuma and 100% Zulu boy. So what the point I'm trying to make is that the issues of tribalism and, 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 ethnicity, and ethnicity will actually replace what we know as racism. And this is gaining momentum, particularly in Guazulu Natal. But this is not to justify what is happening in the past week or so. Now, let's go back to, to this point about what we have been seeing in the past week. I know that the, um, the unrest has obviously, uh, you know, trickled down to expose other things that this country has been battling with for years, and, and racism is one of those. Uh, just going back to, you know, the fundamental things that we've been seeing, you know, playing out in front of a lot of South Africans, some uh, analysts have actually been very, very brazen enough to call what we have seen as um, an actually a planned terrorism government itself has said that this is economic sabotage um, the question then remains um, again and the focus goes to our state security why were they caught unaware why were they caught off guard your reaction and your thoughts around that sorry can you repeat the question you're picking so the question, uh, you know, following the violence that we have yes. seen in, over the past week has been around state yes. security, has been around law enforcement agencies in, in their entirety. Mm -hmm. Because if we are going to call yes. these, um, you know, acts of planned terrorism and, and the government saying that this is uh, actually economic sabotage, then, uh, you know, what, yes, yeah. what do we as ordinary South Africans, um, you know, um, do we have to feel some form of uh, uh, comfort around our state security um, agency? I mean, uh, uh, were they caught off guard? Were they caught unaware? What are we to make of just their response um, uh, during this entire uh, process of, of unrest? Yes, I think they were caught off guard, you're quite right. Tell you why. Because the, the, the government is, 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 is faced with a lot of challenges within the party and, and in government, for example, the, the, the factional battles within the ANC and the incarceration of, of, of President Zuma, the state capture, um, ESCOM, and so on and so forth. So the issues of security or state security were not the main priority because government um, is dealing with a lot of issues that they, have, that they have not been able to resolve since 1994. So state security was not the main priority, unfortunately, because of what I've just said. So really they were caught, caught off guard. Even the president himself did not deny that they, they were not ready for this um, um, kind of uh, a disruption or, 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 or looting that has made in the past week. In the, in the, in the past week. And also the, 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 the police services or the, the security services is not well capacitated. You might have seen that, you know, the police were, were sort of overwhelmed by these um, um, protests because they are dealing with, 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 with large crowds without any 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 capacity. So hence those malls were were, 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 were were the targets of, of looting and, and the looters were able to get away with whatever they wanted in those particular uh, shopping malls. So honestly we were not ready because we were dealing with a lot of things. What made the situation worse we are still with a third wave of this pandemic. So the state security you know was not in government uh, priority because now the, 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 there's COVID, there's vaccination, there's, co there's COVID corruption, and so on and so forth, and the economy as well. Now, going back to uh, the very important points that you were making around what we are seeing now as the almost like the aftermaths of, of, of this unrest in KZN specifically, in terms of those racial tensions in that community, obviously the police minister being very careful there to say that 
the, the, the immediate uh, need is that there is criminality that is involved in that area. But a lot of people on the ground in KZN are saying that they are being um, you know, uh, exposed to, to racism. Uh, and, and it's actually bubbling over now in, in, in that province. Talk to me about um, the fact that do you think that government is downplaying the, the, the racial tension in that province and in those areas specifically? And also as, as South Africa, can, can we truly be an inclusive and non-racial society, do you think? Yeah, I think the government is very careful in terms of how they address the issue of racism there because this has been um, the problem that we have, well, well, that the, the challenge that we have been confronted with for many, many years since colonialism, apartheid, and where we are today. And even the issue of race and racism and race relations are not um, 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 addressed because of many things that government is 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 faced with. So I don't. I, I think the, the minister, particularly, I've seen in one of the interviews he had with media that he was very careful in terms of making this um, um, race or racial discourse, you know, at the fore of what is happening. So he had to use uh, the criminality as part of what is of, of 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 what we see. But it's quite interesting because if you see. Uh, in the in the clips that you guys have, which you did a very good job in the past week or so, um, is who's looting and 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 why those people are looting? You find that those people are looting are blacks, and the majority of 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 of, of you know, if you look into statistics, the majority of the people who are not working or unemployed are black people. So it makes a sense if then you say that. This has to do with racial inequality because these are black people who are not employed. These are black people who can't find jobs. These are black people who don't have skills to start, to start their own businesses. And this is the majority of the population. So race is part of, 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 of what we saw, whether we like it or not. But I'm not denying the, 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 the criminal element that we're part of this, um, of, 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 of this looting. All right, Dr. Nomahwai, thank you so much for your time and your analysis. Um, that's where we have to leave it for this afternoon. That was Dr. Tandolue to Nomahwai, senior political lecturer at Northwest University, is also a political analyst, just weighing in on what's really at play in Phoenix in KwaZulu Natal and also responding to that breaking news story that we bring you this afternoon where three more people who are alleged instigators in the recent unrest that we've been seeing in this country have been arrested. Police also saying that they are not part of the 12 um, alleged instigators that they have identified. Well, we'll continue with this top story and